Hi, I'm John Green. Welcome to my salon. This is Mental Floss Video, and did you know that in the late 1990s, Joey Ramone of the Ramones was infatuated with then CNBC talk show host Maria Bartiromo? They eventually became pen pals, and she'd give him investment advice over email. He even wrote her a song and asked her to come to CBGB's to hear it. She couldn't make it, but she did send a camera crew. She later, very generously, called it a tremendous tribute. And that's the first of many facts about rock bands I'm going to share with you today in this video brought to you by our friends at Geico. To promote Radiohead's debut album, Pablo Honey, their U.S. record label, Capital, made the weird choice to align them with Beavis and Butthead. One print ad read, Radiohead, better than Butthead. That's just terrible. It's so cringy. Before they were astonishingly old and somehow still alive, the Rolling Stones were cool for their long hair, which frustrated British hairdressers in the 1960s. Hairdressers even wrote into newspapers to complain about the new popular style. In December 1964, the band took out an ad in the music magazine NME that said, Happy Christmas to the starving hairdressers and their families. The guitarist of Rage Against the Machine, Tom Morello, loves Star Trek. He even appeared in Star Trek Insurrection and an episode of Star Star Trek Voyager. Other nerdy rockers? Led Zeppelin. They loved The Lord of the Rings, as you might know from the Mordor and Gollum references in Ramble On. But it's a myth that there's a picture of a Lord of the Rings character inside Led Zeppelin 4. That's actually a figure borrowed from tarot cards. Another rock myth that Jimmy Page played the guitar solo for the Kinks in You Really Got Me. It's a myth that makes sense in a way because the Kinks couldn't play their instruments very well. And that is a proper good rock solo, but no, it was not Jimmy Page, although he did help out with a couple other Kinks songs. The band Garbage got its name because an early listener told them that their music sounded like garbage. But getting negative reviews puts garbage in good company. Like in 1976, Rolling Stone magazine reviewed ACDC's first album and the piece read, Hard Rock has unquestionably hit its all-time low. 32 years later, still rockin' hard, ACDC appeared on the cover of Rolling Stone. By the way, Hard Rock actually hit its all-time low with the band All-Time Low. I'm just kidding, All-Time Low fans and All-Time Low members who watch Metal Flaw. Another poorly reviewed rock band was the Sex Pistols. Also in 1976, NME wrote up Anarchy in the UK and claimed Johnny Rotten sings flat, the song is laughably naive, and the overall feeling is of a third-rate Who imitation. Speaking of the Who, there's a legend that they were banned from all Holiday Inn hotels after a 1967 incident in which they backed a Lincoln Continental into a pool in Michigan. No one knows for sure what happened, least of all the members of the Who, but lead singer Roger Daltrey has claimed that they were billed $50,000 for whatever went down that night. Another rock band that's a nightmare for hotels? The Black Keys. They like to stay at the Columbia Hotel in London, and according to singer-guitarist Dan Auerbach, once, when the guy wouldn't serve us anymore, we took a tablecloth and wrapped it around the beer tap, and the beer flowed all night. Beginning in 1960, the Beatles had a 56-night residency at a club called the Kaiser Keller Club in Germany. They worked every day of the week and played from 7.30 to 9 p.m., then 9.30 to 11 p.m., then 11.30 to 1 a.m., and then 1 1.30 a.m. to 2 a.m., and they alternated sets with a band called Rory Storm and the Hurricanes, whose drummer at the time was none other than Ringo Starr. No, oh, Ringo Starr. Truly the luckiest man ever to walk into the Kaiser Keller Club. Speaking of the Beatles, they recorded Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band at Abbey Road, the same place and time that Pink Floyd recorded their debut album, The Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Okay, let's jump forward to the 90s. The dancing janitor in the music video for Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit was a reference to the fact that Kurt Cobain worked as a janitor in a high school very soon after dropping out of that very same high school. Aerosmith's biggest hit, I Don't Wanna Miss a Thing, wasn't on any of their albums. Its only album release in the U.S. was on the soundtrack for the 1998 film Armageddon. Speaking of big hits, Joe Elliott of Def Leppard has admitted that he has, quote, not a clue about what pour some sugar on me means. And Under Pressure by Queen and David Bowie was kind of a fluke. Bowie just happened to be in the studio with the band helping out with the song Cool Cat, and then they sat down and wrote a new song. And then later, Vanilla Ice turned it into Ice Ice Baby, ruining Under Pressure for me forever. While touring in the 80s, U2 performed as their own opening act a couple times. They'd put on wigs, call themselves the Dalton Brothers, and sing country songs. Michael Stipe of R.E.M. once said about the band's hit Shiny Happy People, quote, 
I hate that song. Recently, he's toned down his criticism a bit and just says that it has, quote, limited appeal for him. In 2003, Green Day was about to finish an album titled Cigarettes and Valentines, but 20 song recordings got stolen, so they had to scrap the album and they started on a new one, American Idiot. The Talking Heads album Speaking in Tongues is called that because it initially contained gibberish. David Byrne once explained, I originally sang nonsense and I made words to fit that. And that worked out all right. Pearl Jam has a lot of stories about how they got their name. Like, early on they said it was named for the great-grandmother of Eddie Vedder, Pearl, who laced her jam with peyote. Of course, that sounds like nonsense and probably was. Later, they said they just liked the word Pearl and added the jam when they went to a Neil Young concert in which he did some versions of his song's jam style. It's a myth that KISS stands for Knights in Satan's Service. According to Gene Simmons, they just like the name. And in his autobiography, he wrote, At one point, we were stopped at a red light, and Paul said, How about... Kiss. Peter and I nodded. And that was it. It made sense. The Foo Fighters had a 52-page tour writer in 2011, but not because they're super high maintenance. It was actually a fun activity book with coloring book pages and word searches. On the most recent and allegedly final Motley Crue tour, Tommy Lee had a 55-foot drum roller coaster. According to him, drumming upside down that high in the air is twice as difficult. Originally, Eddie Van Halen played the drums and Alex played guitar, but Alex eventually got better than Eddie at the drums, so he switched to guitar. Similarly, Paul Simonon, who played bass for The Clash, originally tried to learn the guitar, but switched because, according to him, the bass is easier and has only four strings. Cherie Curry called into a radio station while Joan Jett was being interviewed years after their band The Runaways had broken up. Curry had heard her being interviewed, so she dialed in to let Jett know that she was proud of her. In 2007, Arnel Pineda became the lead singer of Journey. Before that, he was actually the lead singer of a cover band called The Zoo, and yes, he performed Journey covers. The band discovered him on YouTube. Which reminds me, Guns N' Roses, if you can't get Axl Rose to come out of retirement, that's actually me singing uh, Welcome to the Jungle but in a uh, copyright acceptable way. Two members of Metallica, James Hetfield and Lars Ulrich, voiced dragons in an episode of the animated Disney series Dave the Barbarian. In 2010, Florida officials pardoned Jim Morrison for a 1969 incident at a Doors concert in which he supposedly unzipped his pants on stage and flashed the audience. It only took four decades! And he was dead, you know, but... Still, to return to Guns N' Roses briefly, Guns N' Roses reportedly paid $1.5 million to make the November Rain music video. Allegedly, the custom-made coffin in the video alone cost $8,000. In the late 1990s, it was estimated that Jerry Garcia's estate was paid $400,000 a year by Ben & Jerry's to use the name Cherry Garcia. The instruments used in the Beach Boys' brilliant album Pet Sounds included Coke cans, bicycle horns, water jugs, and finger cymbals. And finally, I returned to my salon to tell you my all-time favorite fact from rock and roll history, which is that Michael Bolton may have auditioned as the vocalist in Black Sabbath after Ozzy Osbourne left. Bolton has denied this in interviews, because of course he has, but guitarist Tommy Iommi insists that it was Bolton on the audition tapes. Thanks for watching Monofoss video, which is made with the help of all of these nice people and made possible by our friends at Geico. In the comments, let me know the first concert you ever went to. Mine was The Cure, and as we say in my hometown, don't forget to be awesome.